Thank you for watching Murder, Monsters, and Mysteries. Today we take a look at The Beast of Jevedon. Between 1765 and 1767, an unknown creature killed over 100 people in a rural region of France. This creature captivated and horrified the world. At the time, this mysterious creature was called the Beast, and it ravaged the rural region of Jevedon, France. A hundred men, women, and children fell victim. While many French at the time presumed the beast to be a wolf, and many modern scholars agree, some have suggested that the beast may not have been a wolf at all. So what was it? The first recorded fatal attack of the beast occurred on June 30th, 1764, when a 14-year-old shepherdess, Jean Boulay, tended a flock of sheep. Boulay was not the creature's first victim. As historian J.M. Smith writes in Monsters of the Jevudan, about two months prior, a young woman tending cattle was attacked by a creature, like a wolf, yet not a wolf, but escaped because her herd defended her. The attacks continued through the summer and into autumn. According to George M. Ebert's 2002 book, A Guide to Cryptozoology, France was in a slump at the time, on the heels of the Seven Years' War. The nation had lost battles to Prussia and the British. The beast offered a perfect foil to rally around, and there was no dearth of reports in the press about encounters with the animal. The Bête Feroche, ferocious beast, attacked and partially ate women and the young, according to the reports, but lone adult men were also targets. There were so many attacks that some speculated that there were in fact two or more beasts. The terrified population of Jevodan did not sit idle, and individual stories of bravery captivated the public. As Smith writes, bounties were offered and hunters combed the countryside looking for the creature. On October 8, 1764, hours after a mauling, the beast was seen at Chateau de la Bombe, stalking a herdsman. Hunters followed the animal into the estate's woods and flushed the animal into the open. The hunter shot a volley of musket fire into the creature, but after a fall, the beast rose and ran off. Even children were celebrated for taking on the beast. On January 12, 1765, the beast attacked a 10-year-old Jacques Parfou and a group of seven friends ranging from ages 8 to 12. However, Parfou led a counterattack with sticks driving off the creature. The children were rewarded by the king, and Parfou was given an education paid for by the crown. The children's heroics prompted the court of King Louis to send royal hunters to destroy the beast. There was now a 6,000 livre bounty on the creature's head. The story of the beast, meanwhile, was spreading and covered in newspapers from Boston to Brussels becoming one of history's first media sensations, one of the first cryptids to go viral. Among the most notable tales of bravery was when a 19-year-old Mary Jean Valet was attacked by the beast on August 11th, 1765, while crossing the river Deges with her sister. Armed with a bayonet affixed to a pole, Valet impaled the beast's chest. The creature got away though. But Valet became known as the Amazon and the Maid of Jevoudan. On September 20th, 1765, Francois Anton, the king's 71-year-old gun bearer, and his nephew shot a large wolf near an abbey at Chaises, which was assumed to be the beast. Antoine was awarded with the money and titles, and the corpse of the animal was stuffed and sent to the royal court. But the attack started again in December. According to an account in the 1898 volume of the Parisian Illustrated Review, this time, the beast seemed different, at least behaviorally. Where before the creature had been afraid of cattle, this time it showed no fear. Could this then be a second beast, or the same beast adapting, hungrier? The royal court chose to ignore these new attacks, insisting that Antoine had killed the creature. Finally, a sudden outbreak of attacks in early June 1767 compelled a local nobleman, the Marquis de Patcher, to organize a hunt. 
On June 19th, one of the hunters, a local man named Jean Chastel, shot a wolf on the slopes of Mount Moucher. An autopsy of the animal revealed human remains inside, and the animal had non-wolf characteristics as described by witnesses. The attacks ended, but while it was assumed that the beast Chastel begged was the beast, doubts remained that it was indeed a wolf. The creature was consistently described by eyewitnesses as something other than a typical wolf. It was as large as a calf, or sometimes a horse. Its coat was reddish-gray with a long, strong, panther-like tail. The head and legs were short-haired and the color of a deer. It had a black stripe on its back and talons on its feet. Many drawings of the beast at the time endow it with lupine characteristics, making some wonder if this creature was a werewolf. Witnesses described the beast as an ambush hunter which stalked its prey and seized it by the throat. The wounds found in the bodies were typically to the head and limbs with the remains of the 16 victims reportedly being decapitated. The creature prowled in the evenings and in the mornings. Historians, scientists, and pseudoscientists and conspiracy theorists have all proposed theories about what the beast was. Among the suspects, a Eurasian wolf an armored war dog, a striped hyena, a lion, some kind of prehistoric predator. Like we said earlier, a werewolf, a dog-wolf hybrid, or a human. Of the candidates, the most fanciful is obviously the werewolf. Also unrealistic is that the beast was an extinct prehistoric predator such as a bear dog, dire wolf, or hyonodon. The idea that such a large animal would evade detection for thousands to millions of years is implausible, but still possible. Others have suggested that maybe a human serial killer may be responsible for the attacks. Many of the victims of the beast were reported to be decapitated, something few animals would do. Well, it is unlikely that a killer would roam about for victims in broad daylight wearing a bestial costume. Those who support this theory believe that the human killer used an animal to carry out the crimes. What was the animal? Some have speculated that it was an armored war dog, which would explain its strange appearance and why it shrugged off musket shots. Some depictions of the beast and the animal slain by Chastel suggest it resembled a striped hyena. It is possible that a striped hyena may have been in a person's private holding and then escaped since it was not native to France, it would have appeared unusual. However, striped hyenas are not known to attack humans. Carl Hans Take, a biologist and author of The Jevedan Tragedy, The Disastrous Campaign of a Deported Beast, argues the beast may have been an immature male lion. Like the hyena, it is possible that a lion escaped from captivity. The beast reportedly was an ambush hunter that seized prey by the neck and could possibly decapitate a victim. A lion could exhibit those same predatory behaviors. Lions have been known to prey upon humans as food sources, such as the famous case of the Lions of Savo, in which a lion pair killed over 130 victims in under a year. Another supporting fact is that the territory of the beast, at roughly 56 by 50 miles, aligns with a lion's typical range. Eyewitnesses in France at the time were likely not familiar with living lions, and what they did know about them came from very stylized imagery. A sub-adult male lion does not have a fully developed mane, sometimes has a mohawk type of stripe running down its back. This matches the description of the beast by eyewitnesses. Take argues, one hunter at the time, Captain John Baptiste Duhamel, wrote, You will undoubtedly think, like I do, that this is a monster, the father of which is a lion. What its mother was remains to be seen. Among the theories considered most credible is that wolves perpetrated the attack. As Smith tells Smithsonian, Jevodan had serious wolf infestation. He believes that large lone wolves were attacking individual communities across the region, or maybe it was a wolf pack. Wolves are native to the region and had attacked humans before. Some statistics show that wolves attacked humans 9,000 times in France between the 17th and 19th century. In some cases, these types of attacks were rabid wolves. 
There are some flaws to the wolf theory, though, including the frequency of the beast's deadly attacks, suggesting it could not be a single rabbit wolf. Also, none of its victims seems to have contracted rabies, suggesting that their attacker did not carry rabies. Although there are strong voices arguing multiple theories about the identity of the beast of Jevodan, I'll admit that the truth will never be fully known. Without any genetic or forensic evidence, the beast is bound to forever remain a mystery. So what do you think, guys? None of the existing logical theories seem to fit, so should we jump to other conclusions? An unknown cryptid? A werewolf? A psychopath? Some kind of cross-bred creature? Sadly, I don't think we'll ever know. Thank you for watching Murder Monsters and Mysteries. If you enjoyed today's video, please like and subscribe, as we'll be uploading more regularly. Stay tuned for a clip of our movie available on your most favorite streaming platforms. Okay, this is your basic kit. Now, I'll be doing all the work tonight, so you have nothing to worry about. Okay? You got your Bible, various religious texts, uh, different size crucifixes. Why different sizes? I'm glad you asked. The largest crucifix is so the demons can see you coming from far away. As soon as you come in the room, you command their attention and terrify them. Then we work our way down to the smallest of the crucifixes. This one, so you can sneak in. They don't see you coming. You get in really close, they think you're just a regular guy, and then, BAM! You scare the crap out of them with it. Powerful stuff. Now, I kind of see you as a small crucifix sort of guy, and that is by no means a penis size comment. Okay. These water guns are filled with holy water, same with the flask, but use it sparingly, it's expensive stuff. I have to have mine personally blessed by an archdiocese and mailed to me. I'll use it sparingly. That's all I ask. And what are these? Don't touch those! Never touch the beans, okay? These are very important. They're not a toy. Yeah, sorry. The water guns, they used to be toys, but not anymore. Actually got a spare poncho. You want to wear it? It'd be like a matching uniform. Okay. You'd look badass. I'm good. Okay. That's fine. Maybe some other time.